Welcome to Story Station, Season 2, Episode 15. In this episode, you can listen to two stories from New Zealand. The first story is titled, Maui and the Giant Fish. Maui was taunted and ridiculed by his brothers, yet he was still a more successful fisherman than any of them could be. The second story is titled, Ngake and Wataitai the Taniwa of Wellington Harbor. Ngake and Wataitai are two growing Taniwa who decide that their current lake isn't big enough and attempt to move to the sea. Hope you enjoy it! I'll read a story called Maui and the Giant Fish. Maui dreamed of the day that he could go fishing with his older brothers. Each time his brothers returned from a fishing trip, Maui would ask, Next time, can I come fishing with you? But Maui's brothers would always make an excuse. No, you're much too young to come fishing with us. We need all the room in our waka for the many fish that we catch. I'll only take up a little bit of room, and I'll stay out of trouble, I promise. Maui would argue. The eldest brother would reply, You're so skinny, we might mistake you for some bait and throw you overboard for the fish to eat. Maui would get angry. I'll teach them, he'd say to himself. I'll prove how good I am. Secretly, Maui hatched a plan to prove he was a great fisherman. One night, when Maui was alone, he began weaving a strong fishing line from flax. As he wove, he recited an old karakia to give his fishing line strength. When he was finished, Maui took a jawbone which his ancestor, Muri Ranga Wanua, had given him, and bound it securely to the line. Early the next morning, Maui took his fishing line and secreted himself in the hull of his brother's canoe. When Maui's brothers pulled the canoe into the sea, they noticed something a little different. The canoe is much heavier this morning. Are you sure you're helping, said one? I think you've been eating too much kumara, said another. Stop your bickering and get on with it, said the eldest brother. None of the brothers noticed Maui hiding in the home. When Maui heard his brothers drop the anchor, He knew they were too far from land to return. Maui revealed himself to his brother's surprise. What? What are you doing here? You tricked us. No wonder we haven't caught a single fish. The brothers were angry with Maui, but Maui spoke up. I have come to fish because Muri Ranga Wanua said I would be a great fisherman. Let your lines down, as I say my karakia, and you'll catch more fish than you ever have. Maui began his karakia. The brothers threw their lines into the water and instantly began catching fish. One after another, they pulled their fish into the waka. In no time, the waka was full, and the brothers were delighted with their catch. We're the best fishermen ever, the brothers brothers congratulated each other. Now it's my turn to fish, said Maui. The brothers laughed when Maui pulled his fishing line from his bag. (laughs) You'll be lucky to catch a piece of seaweed with that, or maybe a piece of driftwood to float home on. The brothers couldn't contain their laughter. Maui didn't listen. Instead, he recited his karakia and readied his line. Can you give me some bait for my hook? Maui asked his brothers. But the brothers only laughed harder. So Maui clenched his fist and hit himself hard on the nose. His nose bled and Maui covered his hook with his own blood. Maui then stood at the front of the canoe and whirled his line above his head as he recited his karakia. 
He spun his line out to sea. The line sunk deep into the ocean floor, down into the depths of the domain of Tongarilla, and instantly the hook was taken. Maui's line suddenly went taut. The brothers stopped their laughing and held tightly to the side of the waka as they began to speed across the ocean. Cut the line, a brother called, clearly quaking in his seat. We'll all be drowned, said another. Please, Maui, cut the line. But Maui held tight to his line, and slowly a giant fish was pulled to the surface. The brothers huddled in the waka, shivering with fright. The giant fish towered over their small canoe. This is the fish that our grandmother, Murray Rungawanua, said would be gifted to us, Maui said. Guard our fish, and I'll soon return with our people. The brothers agreed to stay, and Maui headed back to the Hawaii. However, as soon as Maui had gone, the brothers began chopping greedily at the huge fish, claiming huge pieces of it as their own. When Maui returned, his people were amazed to see the giant fish. Maui is the best fisherman ever, they marveled. As they neared, the brothers were seen still chopping and arguing over which part of the fish was theirs. The people saw them for the greedy brothers that they were. They were so greedy that they had chopped huge gullies and mountains into the fish's flesh. Over many hundreds and thousands of years, these gullies and mountains became part of the landscape of Aotearoa as we know it today. Birds, plants, animals, and the people of Hawaii populated the giant fish of Maui. And in time, Maui's giant fish became known as the North Island of Aotearoa and Maui's canoe, the South Island. This is the story of Maui and the Giant Fish. The end. I hope you enjoyed this story. The next story begins in a moment. I will read a story called Ngake and Wataitai, the Taniwa of Wellington Harbor. Once, long ago, before the time of Kupe, when Te Ika a Maui was just fished from the depths of the ocean, there lived two Taniwa, Ngake and Wahataitai. In those times, Wellington Harbor was a lake cut off from the sea and abundant in freshwater fish and native bird life. Ngake and Wataitai lived there in the lake at the head of the fish of Maui. Ngake and Wataitai had a great life in their special lake, with all the time in the world to do as they pleased. Ngake was a taniwa with lots of energy. He liked to race around the shores, chasing fish and eels, and leaping after birds that came too close. Wataitai was the opposite. He preferred to laze on the lake shores, sunbathing and dreaming Taniwa dreams. When Ngake and Wataitai were close to the south side of the lake, where the cliffs came down to the water's edge, they could hear the crashing waves of the ocean falling on the shores nearby. So when seabirds flew overhead, Ngake and Wataitai often yelled to them, Tell us, seabirds, what is so special about the sea? And the birds would always reply, the sea is deep, it's vast and wide, it's where many different fishes hide. The sea is the home of the Tongaroa, of Hinamoana, and many others. Wataitai and Ngake could only imagine what secrets the sea held. Wataitai would roll on his back in the middle of the lake, dreaming, imitating the sea noises in his throat. Ngake would switch his tail furiously, 
making huge waves that crashed against the lake shore. As the years went by, the two tiny world grew bigger and bigger, and the boundaries of their lake seemed to grow smaller. Ngake was adamant that he had grown, outgrown his home and soon convinced Wakai Tai that they both needed to break free from the lake that imprisoned him. One summer morning, when Watai Tai was enjoying the morning sunshine at the north end of the lake, Ngake began circling around at high speeds, yelling, Today is the day that I will break free of this lake and swim in the endless sea. Watai Tai began to be excited at Ngake's suggestion. He crossed to the north side of the lake and coiled his tail into a huge spring shape. He focused his sights on the cliffs to the south and suddenly let his tail go. With a mighty roar, Ngake was thrust across the lake, up over the shore, and smashed into the cliff face. Ngake hit the cliffs with such force that he shattered them into huge chunks of rock and earth effectively creating a pathway through to the crook strait. Ngake, cut and bruised, slipped into the sea, finally free to explore as he had dreamed. Watai Tai was shocked at the devastation that Ngake had caused, but also glad that his brother had safely made it to the other side. Watai Tai knew that he would have to follow. He retreated from the north side of the lake to wind his tail into a spring, as he had seen his brother do. He had said a prayer to the Taniwa gods, and then let his tail go. But Watai hadn't been very active in the past, and he wasn't as strong or as fit as Ngake, so his first takeoff was much slower than his brother's. As Watai entered the gap, forced forged by Ngake. He didn't realize that the tide was out. His stomach dragged on the ground, eventually slowing him to a stop. Watai Tai was stranded, stuck between the sea and the lake, desperately lashing his tail and trying to move, but to no avail. Watai Tai could do nothing but lie there, hoping that the incoming tide would lift him high enough to carry him to the other side. But when the tide finally came in, it only helped to dampen his scaly skin and provide fish to sustain his hunger. What Tai Tai was stuck without a hope of ever moving. As the years passed, what Tai Tai became accustomed to his life stranded between the lake and the open sea. The tides would come and go, providing him with food and keeping his skin healthy and moist. Watai Tai made many friends with the birds and sea creatures, and these companions helped him deal with his fate. One morning, there was a dreadful shudder beneath the ocean floor. A huge earthquake erupted. Watai Tai was lifted out of the shallow water and high above sea level. He could do nothing as he was stranded high above the, of the water and he knew his life would end. Watai Tai bared farewell to his many bird friends and animals and soon after gasped his first breath. As he died, Watai Tai's spirit transformed into a bird, Tekeo, and flew to the closest mountain Mataringi, or Mount Victoria. Takeo looked down on the huge tiny web body that stretched across the raised seabed and cried. She cried for the great friendships that the Watai Tai had made, shown by the huge numbers of bird and sea life that had gathered around, and for the freedom of the sea which Watai Tai would never experience. When Tekeo had completed her lament, she bade farewell to Watai Tai and set off to the Taniwa spirit world. Over the years, Watai Tai's body turned to stone, earth, and rock, 
and is known to this day as Hai Tai Tai. Matai Rangi still looks down on the body of Watai Tai. At the very top of Matarangi is still known as Tangi Tekeo. When Ngake let the spring and his tail loose, he used so much force that he created a great gash in the earth and a river was formed. This river is now called Pea Waka Kairangi, or the Hut River. The remnants of rocks smashed aside when Ngake exited into the sea are visible today as Te Araro Okupe, or Steeple Rock, and Barrett's Reef, have long been known as dangerous rock formations to mariners ending entering the Wellington Harbor. Although Ngake was never seen again, it is still believed that he resides in the turbulent waters of the Cook Strait. When the sea is calm, Ngake is off exploring the Pacific Ocean. When the sea is turbulent and rough, Ngake is at home chasing sea life to satisfy his Taniwa appetite. And this is the story of Ngake and Wataitai, the Taniwa of Wellington Harbor. The end. I hope you enjoyed this story. Thank you for listening to Story Station. We are adding stories as frequently as possible, so check back often. We would love to hear your feedback and any questions you may have. Thank you.